Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video comparing ANOVA and the Kruskal-Wallis test using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we're interested if a treatment performs better than a control group, a treatment as usual group, or a waiting list, or sometimes if a treatment works better than another treatment. And oftentimes to answer this type of research question, we would use an ANOVA, analysis of variance, which is a parametric statistic that has a good deal of statistical power. That is the ability to detect a difference that's actually there. Now ANOVA does have assumptions. The data have to meet certain assumptions in order to conduct ANOVA. And if the data do not meet those assumptions, we have a few choices. And one of those choices is to use the Kruskal-Wallis test, which is a non-parametric alternative to ANOVA. So taking a look at these fictitious data, having the data view in SPSS, you can see these are configured for ANOVA. I have an independent variable here with three levels, individual counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual, and a dependent variable, depression, measured at the continuous level. Let's assume with this variable depression, that a higher score represents a higher level of depression and a lower score represents a lower level of depression. So first I'm going to test the assumptions for ANOVA. And specifically I'm going to be looking at the outliers, see if we have outliers uh, in the dependent variable depression. I'm also going to be looking at homogeneity variance and I'm going to test the dependent variable depression to see if it's normally distributed across all the levels of the independent variable treatment. So I'll start with looking at normality and outliers. I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. I'm going to move Depression over to the Dependent List, uh, list box, and Treatment over to the Factor List, list box. Now it's worth noting here that depending on how you want the output to be configured, you don't have to move treatment over to the factor list list box. You can also split the file. Either way will give you the same result. It's just a difference of how you want the output configured. In this case, I want the output to be grouped together. So I'm gonna move the treatment variable to the factor list list box. Then over in plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram. I'm also going to check off normality, plots, with tests, and click continue, and then click OK. And you can see we have the output here from the Descriptive Statistics Explorer dialog. And looking at the test normality, you can see we have each level of the independent variable tested individually. The individual counseling, the group counseling, and the treatment as usual all have a separate Shapiro-Wilk and Kolmogorov smirnoff test run for them. Now when testing for normality, we decide which statistic we're going to interpret before we run the test. And I typically interpret the Shapiro-Wilk, so that's the statistic that I'm going to go with here. If you had decided to interpret the Kolmogorov smirnoff in advance, you would see you have a non-statistically significant finding for all three levels of the independent variable, in which case you could assume that the dependent variable depression is normally distributed across all three levels. I chose to interpret the Shapiro-Wilk, and as I mentioned, I'm gonna stay with that. And you can see that I have a non-statistically significant finding for group and treatment as usual. However, I do have a statistically significant finding for the individual level of the independent variable, which means I have to assume that the scores for depression that align with the individual level treatment are not normally distributed. Therefore, I have violated the normality assumption for conducting ANOVA. It's worth noting here that ANOVA is robust to violations or normality. And if we're working with real data here, it would not be unusual 
just to progress forward with ANOVA. But I want to demonstrate the Kruskal Wallace test, so I'm going to interpret this very strictly and assume that we have to consider not moving forward with ANOVA based on this violation of the normality assumption. If I move down the output a bit and I get down to the box plots, and you can see here that there are no outliers. So we violated the assumption for normality, but we've met the assumption for absence of outliers. Then moving back to the data editor, and you could do this from the output view as well, I'll go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. I'm going to put Depression in the Dependent Variable list box and Treatment in the Fixed Factor or Independent Variable list box. And then under Options, I'm just going to check off Homogeneity Tests. Click Continue and click OK. And you can see here we have a non-statistically significant p-value for the Levine's test of equality of error variances, so I can assume homogeneity of variance because this value, 0.268, is greater than 0.05. Now again, assuming that we violated an assumption to a degree that we can't interpret the results of ANOVA, I would normally skip this, uh, but I want to show you what the results are for the analysis of variance, looking at the treatment row here, we do have a statistically significant finding. But again, we're not going to interpret this. We're going to move over to a Kruskal-Wallis test and see what the p-value is there. Now, the Kruskal-Wallis test does not have the same assumptions as ANOVA, but it does have assumptions, namely that the distributions have the same shape and equal variances. So if I move back up the output viewer to the box plot, what we're looking for here is that these three box plots are roughly equal in shape. Now it's rare that you're ever going to find three box plots in a situation like this that are identical, but we just want to see if they're similar. And there's a few things we'll look at. Uh, one is the top whisker and the bottom whisker, the distance between the two. And if I look at these three box plots, I would say they're roughly equal. And the other element would be the rectangle, the interquartile range. As you can see, it's larger for individual, smallest for group, and the treatment as usual interquartile range is between the two. However, taking a look at these three box plots, even though they're not identical, we could say that they are similar. And there is a degree of subjectivity, of course, to interpreting uh, box plots or any graph. Uh, but we're going to say in this case that they are similar and that we've met the assumptions of the Kruskal-Wallis test. So moving forward to run the Kruskal-Wallis test, I'm going to go to Analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and K-related samples. This is what the dialog looks like by default. I'm going to move depression over to the test variable list. And the grouping variable is going to be treatment. And notice when I uh, move this variable over, you have the question mark says define range. I'm going to define this range as 0 as a minimum and 2 as the maximum, because in this case, uh, individual is 0, group is 1, and treatment as usual is 2. And you can see by default, Kruskal Wallis H is checked off. I'm going to leave that as a set and then click OK. So, taking a look at the results of the Kruskal Wallis test, we can see that we have the mean rank for individual, group, and treatment as usual, and then for the actual test statistic, we have a statistically significant finding, a 0 0.000, which usually when writing this up in like an APA style manuscript, we report as less than 0 0.001. I hope you found this video comparing ANOVA and Kruskal-Wallis test to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.